Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this Creative Warrior online program powered by Vidya Dhan. Yes, this is Pooja Arora welcoming you all to this lovely series going on with the Global Media Education Council. Yes, with Global Media Education Council, we are bringing you 30 great sessions with great speakers talking about uh, different uh, journalism based different communication based and different media based uh, topics and today we have a wonderful topic which is basically not something that we'd say it's a uh, it's a different but it's required for everyone so today we have with us dr florence handy Karabha. And she's going to discuss about development communication for the upliftment of human society. Yes, Dr. Abha Rabha is assistant professor and head electronic media and anchoring Royal School of Communications and Media, the Assam Royal Global University. It's in Guwahati. She has been an avid educationist since 1994. She is the founder and principal of Scholars Home Public School Maligao Gohati. It was established in 1996. She was among the earliest English TV news uh, presenters on private satellite television and on the first radio jockeys on private FM radio in Assam. So, so good to have uh, Ms. Rabha here on this platform. Most welcome, uh, Prof uh, Professor Rabha. Thank you, thank you, Pooja. And uh, yes, I'm very uh, grateful uh, to Ambarisha Saksenaji and uh, Ujjal uh, Chaudhary ji, uh, you know, for giving me this opportunity to be on this uh, wonderful platform. Uh, and the, the topic uh, that I have chosen today is a development communication for upliftment of human society, uh, because uh, it is uh, very close to my heart. And uh, I believe that uh, most of our audiences uh, will be kind of uh, students, undergraduate students. Uh, so um, I would like to share my PPT now. Uh, just give me a minute. Yes, you have all the rights to share your PPT and I'll be learning at the back end. Over to you. Thank you, Pooja. Is my PPT visible? Yes, ma'am. You can make it uh, full screen. I'll do that. Is it okay now? Yes. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, well, uh, dear students, um, I'm Florence Handy Grabha. Uh, yes, as uh, Pooja said, I'm the assistant professor and, you know, head in electronic media and anchoring in a a Royal School of Communications and Media, uh, the Assam Royal Global University. And uh, yes, since 1996, um, uh, I have been running a school called Scholars Home Public School in Maligao. Um, uh, and I'm the founder principal of that school. Uh, now, the school is special uh, to me, and uh, uh, I would say that this school is special uh, because uh, in spite of being a regular school, a kindergarten school, uh, it has an education trust which supports, you know, um, uh, the education of uh, needy girls who belong to um, a lower economic backgrounds, humble families. Um, uh, so kind of develop, development communication has become a way of my life. And then, uh, yes, I have remained a former television news presenter. Center. And even during the television talk shows uh, and uh, do, uh, doing my, you know, RJing on radio, um, we have always I have got ample of opportunities to develop and communication, to do develop and communication uh, in my own ways. So that way I've been very lucky and fortunate. And even while writing the book, um, uh, my coffee, first coffee table book, book, which is called Celebrating Womanhood, um, which is based on the empowerment of women, um, uh, you know, uh, this uh, book 
book kind of consists of uh, um, uh, the achievements uh, of you know uh, the remarkable women from Assam in um, uh, in the field of work you know in different areas um, and now uh, so again uh, that book why am I uh, sharing all these things with you uh, it's not that I'm boasting I'm just uh, trying to tell you that if an ordinary person like me could do you know uh, so much in the field of development communication I could do my little bit uh, through uh, you know all the platforms that was uh, uh, that the almighty offered to me uh, in my la last 30 years of working span or say 17 years in uh, media industry uh, so you uh, you know as a uh, young uh, minds and as a future of uh, our uh, nation you can also do your bit in some way or the other uh, well let me tell you this book celebrating womanhood that i'm talking about which was in english uh, after that nirbhaya case you know uh, which happened in 2012 it shook me so much that you know i decided to kind of you know turn it uh, get it translated into assamese so that the book also reaches the interiors you know in assam uh, because everybody cannot read english uh, so that is the motto of development communication uh, that you know our information or our stories of inspiration uh, or any kind of um, information it reaches out to the rural areas uh, to the people who are underprivileged um, so that is it uh, so now coming back to our topic um, development communication for the upliftment of human society so um, uh, dear students uh, this is uh, the topic for today and i've chosen it because it is very close to my heart um, in now let us um, tell you the objectives so, well the objectives of this session today um, are going to be like we are going to understand the basics of development communication uh, the significance of mass communication in global human society we are going to explore how communication can foster rural development and we are going to discuss the diffusion of innovation how development support system you know communication works and uh, we will also discuss about the efforts in development reporting now, what is the concept now trying to understand the uh, concept of development communication? What is it? Well, the term development means positive change or change for the better, right? So such a change is expected to enrich our lives, elevate our lifestyle to modern, scientific and hygienic levels. You know, the reach and access to information is vital for society in this information age, extending services of meaningful information to the masses at their doorstep is the business you know of development communication now let me share with you such, uh, some examples um you say let us consider um, say a few examples like i am speaking to you from guwahati in assam and the northeastern region you know is home to um, um uh, you know several uh, agricultural university and veterinary colleges which carry out researches you know to improve variety of seeds uh, better farming techniques and to enrich productivity of poultry and livestock uh, but the real purpose of such research will be served only when it reaches the target audience, right? So the aim of the research is to educate the farming community about the innovations to help them get better ease. So um, now there's another story uh, which we studied during our college time, you know, several years back, uh, an association of about um, 100 self-help groups, you know, um, in Assam, in Morigan district, they collectively took loans of several lakhs of rupees, you know, from a nationalized bank. Now these self-help groups repaid the loan even before the stipulated time. So the bank officials were so impressed with their punctuality that they, you know, offered um, more such loans, you know, to the self-help groups so this kind of information it has to be made accessible um, uh, to other small um, uh, help groups right uh, and the small and marginal farmers groups uh, so that you know it will encourage them uh, to tow this line and improve their living standard so this is the motto of um, you know uh, development communication uh, so at this point it will be appropriate to say that information is power because the world is almost entirely dependent on this tool there Therefore, information can be taken as a measurement of a you know, nation's progress and development communication is a system of communication which is utilized for the upliftment of human society. Now, this discipline enables us to process information received from mass media and you know, helps distribute it among the masses for their benefit, right? Uh, so, 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 see, see, there's a, an increasing emphasis across the world. <clears throat> 
to handle uh, socio-economic issues like global warming uh, and the you know, thinning of the Antarctic ice zone, poverty eradication, and gender equality. Now, research scholars have said developing communication, if explored you know, effectively, has enormous potential to address these issues um, uh, that are challenging mankind across the spectrum. Uh, now, um, if I go back to my college days or school days, you know, there was not so much of awareness regarding gender equality or say global warming but uh, now the days are different um, uh, now the new areas are emerging right now we are all aware of global warming we are all aware of gender equality uh, it is of course through media right so development communication uh, refers to the use of communication to facilitate social development so development communication techniques include information dissemination and education uh, behavior change uh, you know social marketing uh, social mobilization media advocacy communication for social change and communicate and community participation now this uh, come now uh, this brings us to the theories uh, you know models of development communication now uh, i trust like uh, most of you um, uh, many of you would like to become a development communicator perhaps in future a development uh, um, um, a journalist you know a development communicator so how will you measure development of a region so for that uh, we can follow four models now first one is dominant paradigm now what is dominant paradigm um, well see dominant paradigm uh, is uh, something you know um, see in aftermath of uh, the country's independence all right uh, the government laid emphasis on physical infrastructure now the policy makers and scholars felt uh, infrastructural uh, development more important uh, to establish a base for future development um, so uh, though different types of paradigms were being practiced in various parts of the world the indian policy makers felt um, a dominant paradigm of uh, infrastructural development to be most suitable now this was due to the colonial legacy of the uh, british development model which emphasized the country's materialistic progress. Now, suppose I'm in Guwahati or someone is sitting in Delhi and one day we land in New York. So we can clearly make out, you know, that New York is far more uh, developed than, you know, uh, our main cities in India. Uh, so that is the infrastructural, that is due to the infrastructural uh, development, right? So this paradigm emphasized the country's economic growth through industrialization, okay, leaving aside other aspects of society. Now, this had led to a large scale dependence on financial assistance from the developed nations. So a major lacuna, you know, in this approach um, uh, was a compromise on other necessities. Now, but a major advantage of this paradigm's development was the policy planners. See, uh, political leaders and other involved in the development understood the potential of mass media that was, you know, capable of affecting social change. So there was a, uh, a search for an alternative, uh, alternative, you know, model of development. Uh, so policymakers and scholars, you know, um, they developed a new paradigm uh, because of the drawbacks in the dominant paradigm. Uh, now, the new paradigm uh, emphasized on development capabilities and mental faculties of the country's human resources to help them improve their lifestyle uh, in the real sense of the term. So it was based on the principle that if human beings were provided with opportunities, you know, for optimum development of his or her personality uh, and mental faculties, uh, they would maximize their own productivity. So in the process, the state, uh, the economy, uh, the policy makers, and the masses will stand to gain, right? Uh, so human development ho gaya, dominant paradigm ho gaya. Lekin, how can you say that a country or a region is developed if the basic needs are not met, right? So that there uh, we can consider basic needs paradigm. Now on the fresh directions, you know, have been added to the new paradigm with the advancement of literacy and other aspects in society. See, the basic needs model was propagated, which was in a way an extension of the new alternative paradigm of stressing on maximum development of human resources. Um, the prime goal of this new model was to uh, you know, facilitate um, uh, eradication of poverty in developing nations by incorporating ideas, um, you know, like providing adequate food, clean drinking, water, shelter, education, security of livelihood,
transport and communication, um, uh, facilitating mass participation in decision making and instilling self-respect. Now, when we talk about development communication, I'm sure you must have heard about uh, so many stories like uh, news stories. Um, once what happened um, uh, in, a, 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 in a remote area, you know, in India, uh, I think a girl, a girl in a village, uh, she went to defecate in the open because there was no toilet uh, in her house in the village. And um, ultimately, I think that was a very sad news that she got um, um, she was raped by a gang of goons so this is the um, this is the status you know this is the condition of the people in the rural areas when you don't have even the basic amenities like toilet uh, so it is very difficult to you know focus on development or to think about development in other areas uh, so uh, now with time uh, with evolution of all the development communication now we can see you know there are more areas of development uh, around us. The 80s brought in issues like uh, gender justice, human rights, empowerment of these are disadvantaged masses uh, and participatory governance into the fold of government um, development and you know um, development communication now these developments visualize the optimum progress of people and thereby society as a whole the growing literacy made people aware of many facets of academic researchers as well as real life situations now this was so in the developing nations which were incorporated into the paradigms of development over the years all right so this uh, brings us um, so here i would like to you know mention about nora cruz cubrel now who was nora dr nora cruz cubrel now the term development communication was coined in 1972 by nora cruz cubrel who defines the field as the art and science of human communication applied to the speedy transformation of a country and the mass of its people from poverty to a dynamic state of economic growth that makes possible greater social equality and the larger fulfillment of the human potential. And uh, uh, so uh, I would like to share more about uh, Nora Cruz Krubel here. Uh, yeah, Nora Cruz Krubel was a pioneer in the discipline of development communication in Asia and is often referred to as a mother of development communication, giving birth to an academic discipline and training many scholars in that field. Now, in these separate uh, you know, terms uh, spanning 17 years from 1966 to 1985, Krubel served in this field. So she also served as a consultant and founded the Nora C. Krubrel Development Communication Center, uh, which you know conducts development communication projects in health, uh, the environment, and agriculture. Uh, so she received the first Hildegard Award for Women in Media and Communication in 2007. Dr. Kubrell was an epitome of honor and excellence. She was, you know, a sought after consultant to some of the world's most respected institutions, such as the United Nations, the US, US Academy uh, for Educational Development, the International Development Research Center, and the International Institute of Rural Reconstruction. Now, in 2011, the London School of Economics conferred upon her, her an honorary doctorate. In 2013, she was given the UP Alumni uh, Association's Lifetime Distinguished Award achievement. Um, award. Uh, so that's amazing, isn't it? Um, and uh, as uh, Dr. You know, Quibrel uh, puts it, um, uh, what is uh, according to her, uh, she defines it, uh, she defines development communication is the science of human communication uh, linked to the transitioning of communities from poverty in all its form to a dynamic overall growth that fosters equity and the unfolding of the individual potential. Hubert's pioneering thoughts on development communication seem to suggest, uh, you know, that the discourse was not just about informing or educating people to adopt new attitudes, knowledge, practices, or technologies. It implied the unpacking and uprooting of the root causes of structural inequality, marginalization, disempowerment that prevent individuals and societies from making radical changes to improve lives and welfare. So here. Um, we come to the uh, uh, strategies for development communication. Now, if you want to become a development journalist or you know development responsible development communicators in future, uh, so you need to know uh, what are the strategies, how to uh, do development communication. So what is a strategy? 
A strategy is a well-planned scheme for implementing a certain idea over a period of time so that, you know, it can comprehensively yield the desired benefits in due course of time. Now, several strategies in development uh, communication have uh, been experimented, you know, uh, with for achieving the set aims and objectives. So let us discuss uh, them here in the following slides for a better understanding of their concepts. So here are uh, the first four uh, strategies, you know, that I would like to discuss. Uh, now, the social marketing development communication, it is very close to my heart. And uh, now, uh, what is social marketing development communication? Um, well, see, this approach, you know, has been successful since in its launch. Yeah, it has caused um, attitudinal changes uh, in the minds of the target audience, uh, wherever it has been implemented at different points of time. Now, this approach is known by names like non-product advertising, um, uh, social advertising, and public service advertising, okay? Now, this uh, this strategy has certain characteristics. Uh, what are the characteristics? It does characteristics. It does not promote any product, okay? It promotes or advertises a specific issue or concern of society, uh, uh, usually a negative aspect uh, about which it tries to make the masses aware through its messages. Like you must have heard of um, Beti Bachao, Beti um, you know, all these cases. And you must have also seen when you go to the movie hall, you know, any cinema hall, um, Akshay Kumar uh, telling about, um, uh, telling a person that ye das mein aap, uh, apni jaan lene ko tule hai because you are cigarette hai, uh, lekin isi das se aap apni, um, bibi ki jaan bacha sakte hai. Why don't you buy pads? So this is the kind of development communication um, uh, which is, you know, done uh, for a cause, for a social cause. It is not done for any any kind of profit. It is not uh, this advertising, this kind of marketing is not done for uh, any product. So this is a thought. Logo ki soch badalni hai. So uh, that is where, you know, social marketing development communication comes handy. And in most of the cases, you know, well wishers sponsor the space used for advertising and publicity in print, electronic and outdoor mode media. And this is done out of a philanthropic condition, um, you know, consideration or social responsibility. Um, okay, now uh, let us look into the background of this strategy. Now, an advertising campaign tries to promote a product or, you know, service among the masses for maximizing its sales, right? Now, in the process of achieving its goal, the campaign tends to focus on issues of social concern, like, um, you know, um, like spreading awareness uh, uh, about the bad effects of tobacco consumption, like uh, the ad I just told you, which you can see in the cinema halls, which Akshay Kumar does, effects of tobacco um, consumption and the need to refrain from it, prevention of female infanticide, child marriage, and uh, prevention of uh, dowry practices. In fact, I myself have done, a, a, you know, a social marketing uh, development communication um, on uh, Beti bachao, beti padhao. And those people had come to my school, scholars from public school, you know, uh, to do the shooting. And um, there uh, I, I, I kind of stressed on the point uh, that yes, uh, because zaruri uh, hai for nation's growth. So the underlying fact is that it is a kind of publicity strategy but with a difference. It employs all aspects of marketing, a commercial product with an aim to spread awareness about the social evil. So this is called social marketing, uh, you know, uh, marketing of a social cause. And now what is participative rural appraisal? Now, this is also very important, you know, uh, when it comes to, it's an important strategy when it comes to um, communication, um, development communication. Now, this strategy requires communicators from the agencies, okay, which implement the schemes, uh, approach uh, the target groups and communities and make them understand uh, the benefits of the cause they support, like adopting a new system of farming or abstaining from, you know, social evils like tobacco consumption child marriage and dowry. So um, a student of mass communication must understand okay, uh, that in development communication, uh, the human communicators are deemed more influential and effective than the mass media, okay, which is an impersonal medium, right? 
So this is because um, face-to-face interpersonal communication is more influential than an impersonal one. Therefore, um, you know, the, imp- the implementing um, agencies of health, agriculture, and other development sectors, you know, uh, they are employing extension workers. Now, remember this point, uh, remember this phrase, extension workers at the grassroots levels in the rural areas. Now, uh, now, uh, now let us move on to participatory media. Now, this is again one of my favorite strategies. Okay. Now, a major function of the media is to provide entertainment in the form of information, right? Uh, so, uh, only information also gets very boring at times. Uh, so, uh, uh, voluntary agencies, associations, uh, you know, and the government often employ different forms of media. Uh, which offers scope for participation by the target audiences. Street drama uh, is one such a form, you know, of performing arts um, and media, which allows the masses to watch the show uh, at close quarters. Uh, the dramatic effort, efforts of the actors, you know, they deeply influence the audience, making the messages um, very effective. Right. So um, in, even uh, in our university, um, our students are very active, you know, they, they, they kind of uh, do um, street plays, uh, they, they, they pick up a cause and they try to spread awareness um, in the slum areas and, you know, in the nearby villages. Uh, so um, uh, in traditional and folk media too, uh, the masses feel uh, being part of the performers. So this is because of the specific folk or, you know, traditional art form used in the performance, uh, um, you know, that belongs to that area and that people can identify with it and with that we can also you know try to uh, we can also understand the efforts of the union uh, uh, government well the union minister of information and broadcasting um, through its publicity units uh, has been trying uh, to implement uh, development communication schemes uh, um, for a long time. The Directorate of Field Publicity organizes exhibitions of uh, documentaries, uh, you know, publicity films and news reels in the country's remote areas. Uh, the purpose is to make the masses aware of the developments that are taking place in different sectors um, of society. Now, many years back, um, the ministry had undertaken a comprehensive plan called the uh, uh, Bharat uh, Nirman scheme, right? To make people aware of the development schemes adopted and implemented by the government. Now, under this scheme, also officials from the ministries, uh, you know, uh, publicity units, they move to rural and semi-rural areas and inform people about the schemes through various uh, media. And uh, now let us move on to the next slide. Now, when you are doing, when we are discussing about, uh, you know, um, uh, development communication, it is very important to understand the concept of democratic decentralization. Uh, you know, our country enjoys the reputation of being the largest functional democracy with a good track record, you know, and having um, the second largest, uh, you know, population uh, in the world. Uh, so the goal of the government is to work towards improving the socioeconomic status of the masses. Now, see, initially, uh, there was a top-down uh, model, you know. Um, see, the, the five-year plans uh, were uh, therefore adopted uh, to achieve a sustainable and balanced development of the nation. But in Initially, uh, there was a top-down um, the model of development initiatives in which the leadership in the center, you know, they decided um, the priorities, instructions, and goals. The system did not encourage involvement of grassroots level people. The result was uh, that the illiterate and the underprivileged people, you know, um, so they were not uh, given the opportunity. Um, they were not in a position to decide uh, their priorities. So they were provided with hand-holding to guide them towards their goals and objectives. So democratic decentralization was therefore evolved over the years to facilitate the people at the grassroots level to execute simple and ambitious plans for their development. Now this uh, provision came with two noticeable advantages. Uh, What were those? Uh, One, the concept of local self-government arose from the uh, idea that uh, residents understand their development needs and how they want them to be executed. You know, the locals are the best judge of their priorities, the proper method to implement the programs and share the responsibility on a collective basis. Obviously, a person who belongs to a small village in Assam, uh, suppose uh, in the interiors, uh, he or she will know more about the problems there, uh, you know, and uh, um, rather than uh, someone sitting in the center or someone sitting uh, like me in the uh, city of Mohati. Uh, so same way, in, in the interiors, people know their problems more than we know, you know, uh, what they are going through and what are their problems. Uh, and then broadcasting. Now, when we discuss about broadcasting, 
broadcasting well this concept is becoming accepted by the masses across the world right now we can compare this concept to that of democratic decentralization because both work towards the same objective how how now this term means you know disseminating information in the form of electronic waves right uh, to the maximum number of people possible now in other words it means trying to spread the uh, you know um, uh, net of the electronic media to the broadest possible extent for covering as many people uh, as possible um, okay uh, so as time went by this concept to be developed to enable it to cover almost the entire world with less effort so when we are talking about um, communication development, we need to understand uh, the concept of Panchayati Raj institutions. Now, Panchayati Raj as a concept, uh, it has an integral relationship with the cause of development communication. This concept is a chain of institutions, you know, met, but, uh, met uh, for development of the masses uh, in the village level. Now, this is an ideal category of local governments dedicated to self-government of people. So here, I would also like to, um, you know, share with you uh, uh, about background uh, regions, grant fund, uh, BRGF programs. And now what is BRGF? Now BRGF is designed to redress regional imbalances in development. The fund provides resources in supplementing and converging existing development inflows into the identified districts. The objective is to bridge critical gaps in local infrastructure and uh, other development requirements that are not being adequately met through existing inflows. So it is expected that the fund will help strengthen panchayat uh, and municipal level governance with appropriate capacity building, you know, facilitate um, participatory planning, decision making and implementation and monitor the locally felt uh, needs. Uh, now, um, uh, now, uh, now we come to agricultural communication, which is a very important, uh, you know, part of um, uh, development communication um, now wide. Uh, now, because see, being an uh, agricultural, you know, um, based economy, the governments both at the center and states, they've been trying to, you know, uh, carry out ambitious plans and strategies for development of agriculture since independence. Uh, so. Uh, Though agriculture may not have been given primary you know, status in uh, um, other five-year plans, it has been accorded a major position um, in terms of development, um, uh, in terms of you know, developing it as a discipline. Uh, so there are agriculture universities and veterinary colleges in almost every state. Um, and uh, the Indian Council of Agricultural Research, ICAR in Delhi. So these institutions, you know, they particularly the ICAR, they have been spearheading all round development and research strategy uh, in this field for the last several decades okay uh, so now when uh, we talk about agriculture communication you know um, now uh, th there is a component called extension education or extension communication uh, now what is it now see you may be familiar with this term from various sources uh, see, this is development communication it's a specific form uh, tuned to the practice of agriculture now, in simple words it can be seen as the effort and system to communicate the research findings and developments uh, in agriculture studies to farmers the target audiences for helping them to apply the same in their patients um, in their practice now there are so many important researches and in innovations you know happening um, uh, in the uh, la la laboratories in agricultural universities and veterinary um, uh, and um, uh, especially in agricultural universities so it is very important you know um, uh, the the information you know how to uh, how to apply those innovations uh, in the agricultural fields is very important that the information reaches the farmers in the interiors uh, so we know that all state government have departments of agriculture and veterinary sciences so there is an agricultural or veterinary extension officer uh, you know, at the uh, entry level in these departments. So as the name suggests, this official is, you know, um, interested with the task of disseminating the new findings uh, in agriculture and veterinary sciences to the farmers. The officer is also expected to demonstrate and train the farmers, you know, in the specific field and convince them to adopt uh, new practices. Uh, now this brings us to the, uh, you know, uh, media 
uh, for uh, rural uh, development. Uh, okay, now uh, when we are talking about extension communication, um, you know there is another uh, layer of field level workers. Uh, you must have heard of gram saver or gram sevikas. Now their task is to practically you know demonstrate these new findings um, to the farmers in a hands-on manner. So there is a specific form. Now, this is right a specific form of uh, development communication. Now, why we need to you know, concentrate focus on rural development when we talk of uh, development communication? Because in our country, more than 70% of the people, uh, they live in um, rural areas and their main occupation is agriculture and other related uh, trade, right? So the rural communities are characterized by a low or almost zero literacy level, a lack of modern means of transport and communication, lack of innovativeness. So these factors have you know, um, uh, pushed the rural areas into islands of underdevelopment. Uh, so that is why media is very important. Media is very important for rural development, the information need to reach. So let us uh, consider what kind of media will be suitable for rural development. So as far as print is concerned, you see, um, uh, it uh, remains mostly an uh, urban medium and cannot be termed as an you know, ideal medium for rural and agricultural development. Um, uh, so among the components uh, um, of electronic media also, which includes radio, television, cinema, uh, cable television, radio is you know, found to be most suitable for rural as well as agricultural uh, you know, target audiences. Uh, so when we talk about radio, because it is uh, accessible, kind of uh, it is affordable, uh, the people uh, in the rural Rural areas in the interiors, they may not have you know so much of money you know, to own a television or or say to own a laptop. Uh, so in such cases, a radio comes handy. They can they can carry the radio to the you know paddy fields. Even a housewife can you know cook or she can weave you know um, um, in listening to the radio. But it is not possible while watching a television. And then there are many in the rural interior. There there are people you know um, in the rural areas who cannot um, kind of afford to even pay for the private satellite channels. So there the Doodarshan comes handy. So they can watch into um, Doodarshan and you must have heard of Krishi Darshan's programs like in, in Assam, uh, in Doodarshan Guwahati, a program called Kalyani is very popular, you know, uh, which no, no, normally educate, uh, educates and it gives information to the farmers uh, about all the, you know, uh, uh, farming techniques, which is very popular and, uh, you know, um, uh, very informative. Uh, so uh, the that was Doodarshan. And next is, of course, radio, as I told you, radio is affordable and everybody can, they can at least think of having a radio, you know, if they want any information. So radio is very important and very useful for all kinds of development communication. So this brings us to the importance of community radio stations. So here you need to know um, what are community radio stations. Now, this concept is becoming popular in our country and has, you know, great potential for use in development communication. Now, this concept requires a small caliber FM radio station with limited range used for local purposes for disseminating information. Uh, a major advantage of this idea is that, you know, being a localized radio station, all issues of local importance, you know, they get uh, priority. Uh, and then uh, there's folk and traditional media. Now, these media are potential tools for achieving the goals of development communication. This is suitable in a country like ours, you know, uh, which is home to hundreds of communities living in harmony with uh, distinct cultures and uh, language differences. Uh, so we know that because of its close proximity to the masses and the use of local language, ethos, and costumes, folk media is dearer to people from rural areas. So uh, even in our uh, regional channels, we see in Assam, you know, uh, they, they, they go to the villages and they kind of, uh, you know, um, um, uh, involve themselves uh, in all the cultural programs, uh, uh, you know, in, in, with the villagers. And, uh, and that's how they try to extract information or exchange information, you know, through such programs. So this intense, you know, personal level with the audiences or the masses can be exploited or utilized effectively by make big media organizations by ex extending the scope of popularizing information on development, communication, to the masses.
now we come to diffusion of innovation which is another uh, very important you know our topic as far as you know um, uh, our kind of um, communication development is concerned now uh, this diffusion of innovation what is diffusion of uh, in innovation there are so many innovations taking place so how do we you know disseminate uh, these kind of kind of uh, all all the information about the new discoveries new innovations uh, happening in the labs uh, you know in the universities uh, so the diffusion of the you know university approach of developing communication progresses on the basis of the needs assessment of the target audiences which is to be served now these are creation of awareness interest evaluation trial and adoption in this regard we need to take the help of a cross section of media ranging from mass media uh, folk and traditional media to human media or communicators now the factor of human media is highly important okay because the target audiences in def development communication are usually usually uh, you know residents of um, rural areas with illiteracy and poverty as accompanying preconditions um, so besides the situation is aggravated uh, by a lack of exposure to modern mass media instruments uh, like television newspapers and magazines uh, so um, uh, and under such circumstances obviously radio is the most effective easily accessible and standard medium for you know reaching out to this target audience um you know there was news uh, like during the pandemic time um, a few, few, um, there were few we, we got some news like a few students they committed suicide because they had no mobile you know to attend online classes so isse aur dukh ki baat kya ho sakti hai right uh, so uh, it's a, so it's very important that you know human communicators reach there uh, then to help them out and uh, to show them the path for development and hence human communication is important for affecting changes in the minds of the masses you know so this is because of better con convincing capacity of face to face human communication which is a type of personal communication compared with the uh, impersonal communication of the mass media so as the majority of our population is illiterate and unprivileged uh, and residents of rural areas who are devoid of Exposure to modern mass media tools. So this approach is most effective with huge potential benefits. Now, when we are talking about, when discussing about diffusion of innovations, I have to mention the name of Everett Rogers. Now, who was Everett Rogers? Everett Rogers was an American communication theorist and socialist, a sociologist who originated the diffusion of innovations theory and introduced term um, introduced the term early adopter. So he was a distinguished professor emeritus uh, in the Department of Communication and Journalism at the University of New Mexico. So his first edition of Diffusion of Innovations was published in 1962. In the mid 2000s, the Diffusion of Innovations became the second most, you know, cited book in the social sciences. And the fifth edition that was uh, published in 2003 with Nancy Singer, the book, uh, the, this edition addresses the spread of the internet and how it has transformed the way human beings communicate and adopt new ideas uh, even the other day you know i was discussing with my assistant professors in the faculty room in the university and uh, one of my assistant professors just visited a village recently and she was telling me uh, that you know these influencers are becoming very very uh, popular these days and uh, actually the villagers uh, they may not know the big big film stars but they know these influencers because they are uh, available on their uh, you know mobiles on the youtube and they learn a lot of things through the influencers so there is a lot of uh, scope uh, for you know development uh, communication um, these days in the in the in, in this age of uh, new media uh, that way i am very thankful to uh, the you know um, media houses uh, say dy365 news channel or any news channel or do the shuguhati do the northeast for that that matter where i have worked you know for the last 17 years in guwahati uh, i they gave me ample opportunities you know they can give me so many opportunities uh, to do development communication uh, in my own way like whatever in my own capacity i tried to do my bit so if i could do so i'm sure uh, i i i never had any training you know when i uh, joined television in 2000 and four uh, but uh, nevertheless i i did all the talk shows were very inspiring or most of the, that that is a feedback i got from the uh, viewers like that is why i was uh, always like uh, i always had a I, i always had work in hand i never could sit at home you know for the last uh, 17 years ever since i joined media and that is because uh, definitely uh, it proves that you know maybe your shows your television shows or your radio shows are inspiring people of course since la last uh, like 2017 i have not 
not been uh, too much into television because I have joined the university, the academics. Uh, so this is it. So you have ample opportunities to do development reporting, whether it's in radio or newspaper or magazine or in you know community radio stations. But uh, intention hona chahiye, will par hona chahiye, or interest to hona hi chahiye definitely. Uh, so now we need to discuss about what is development support communication. Now, this is another approach of development communication, which is based on the concept of the communicator acting as the mediator of the messages in a two-way communication process. Now, this specific type of development communication takes over the responsibilities of disseminating messages, you know, of development uh, from the researchers and research institutions to the targeted masses for achieving the ultimate goal of society's progress. Now, the particular form of uh, you know development communication and this is use of use of small media like um, video folk and traditional media and slides you know for taking the messages to the rural masses uh, uh, so here again the concept of you know narrow casting compared to broadcasting comes into active consideration now when we talk about narrow casting radio community radio stations are also like that it's, they they are catering to a very you know small uh, group of pe people uh, in the in, in the interior Years. Now, I ask my students in the uh, university also to make small, small brief videos, you know, they take up any issue and they speak about it and they kind of release it in the social media, you know, so that information can be you know, disseminated to the people in the interiors. Uh, and uh, uh, I still uh, remember like uh, when I had acted in a short film called Ganga, if you Google, you will find out Florence and Dick Ganga, it had won a, you know, um, an international award in the New York Film Festival, Independent Film Festival. There we, you know, focused... Uh, uh, on the issue um, uh, of a female infanticide, so that film was uh, based um, um, uh, to, 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 you know, to to discourage uh, female infanticide, um, uh, which was on the lines of Betty Bachao and Betty Padhao. Uh, so, uh, development support communication, what is it? So, according to Erskine Childers, uh, it is a discipline in development planning and implementation in which more adequate account is taken of human behavior factors, behavioral factors in the design of development projects and their objectives. Now, efforts in development reporting. See, newspapers, magazines, and electronic media channels are trying to promote development reporting to popularize it among the masses for achieving long-term goals. Uh, you, you must be, you must have, you, um, uh, there was a show, Satyamev Jayate Karke Amita, uh, Amir Khan ek show karte the. So, usme bhi bahut sare development issues, development uh, stories hoti thi, you know, which was very inspiring. Or abhi bhi aap reality shows mein dekhenge, uh, kai baar you will see, you know, uh, that uh, jaise, um, uh, so, singing competition ho gaya. you see that uh, visually um, uh, challenged you know uh, singer is also there they have included now this is sometimes debatable some people say that it is for trp but if you look at the positive side um, you know this may inspire uh, other visu visually challenged uh, you know um, uh, brothers and sisters of ours also to take part in the cons competition or the physically challenged people also sometimes are included in the reality show so that way uh, electronic media is doing good job right uh, and for example the indian uh, Express carries developmental uh, news, uh, you know, development news uh, items regularly in its issues. In fact, the publishers of this newspaper have constituted constituted a special award for you know best grass grassroots uh, reporting effort, um, efforts. And uh, most of the issues of the Frontline magazine also they publish interesting development stories for the target audiences. Uh, but however, uh, those people who are in you know real need of this information um, will be able to reach and access it if it is broadcast over. Radio. So when I got a chance of uh, to be a radio jockey, you know, for two years in Radio Gapshap and Radio Olala, I'm very grateful to both the radio FM channels. I always used to speak up, you know, pick up uh, some developmental issues, you know, and, and you know, kind of uh, I used to write the script in such a way uh, in between the songs, you know, so that uh, some messages conveyed, you know, uh, through my speaking and through my RJ. Uh, so you can do that um, in the villages also as development journalists and development communicators because those are the people who need it more who need more information um, uh, about the policies uh, the, the, uh, which are you know given by the government on a day on a day to day basis uh, so they need to be informed uh, so the other information uh, option is any voluntary organization disseminating it to the masses through a human mediator or communicator now some voluntary organizations offer fellowships to interested journalists and activists in different development fields now since i am in assam i know i have friends uh, like i have miguel a friend called miguel das if you yeah, google you will know if you if, uh, check in the internet he is running 
running a, an NGO called Utsa. So he is working for you know the upliftment of children who belong to poor uh, poor families. He is he is a kind of uh, uh, he he is a kind of working in the field of uh, um, um, against child abuse. You know, protecting children. And uh, I have a friend called Hasina Karbi who who is based in Shillong, Meghalaya, and she is uh, working um, to 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 don't rescue people from human trafficking. You know, Northeast is very uh, infamous for that. Like um, there's so many um, young girls and women who are um, you know trafficked uh, from this area. So that is again a very serious issue. And I have a friend called Teresa Rehman who uh, who got many uh, awards. You know, um, as a journalist, national awards. Um, um, once uh, she also reported, you know, uh, regarding. Um, uh, you know um, uh, the the importance of like the requirement of you know sanitary pads for the women uh, somewhere in Rajasthan uh, where there was even no 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 water is given to the women you know during the men menstrual cycle so that is really tragic isn't it uh, so these kind of reports have to be you know uh, shared and brought to the public so that you know um, uh, uh, NGOs get to know about it government get to know about it and uh, kind of awareness is and and help reaches those people. So the idea is to help them um, when we send, you know, um, students for fellowships to these kind of, um, um, you know, um, voluntary organizations. The idea is to help them prepare and publish well researched and studied features, essays and articles in various media forums in foreign countries and in Indian journals. So a few of them even encourage media personalities to produce documentary programs and films focusing on any particular theme of development. Like I told you about Ganga, the short film and you must have um, like seen uh, movies like Padman and the movies like uh, Toilet Ek Prem Katha so th these are these films are also based on uh, kind of you know development issues uh, developmental issues so all these efforts are aimed at promotion of development reporting across uh, all fields of life and uh, government of India had initiated two very successful and effective development communication projects like satellite instra uh, instructional television experiment and Kheda communication project in the mid uh, 1970s. Uh, so now let us sum up. Uh, well, the, the development of um, you know, agricultural and rural sectors of India is of vital significance if we have to progress towards prosperity and advancement. To achieve this goal, there is no alternative except to utilize the services of media for development communication purposes. Okay, so most of folk and traditional culture in a society can be transformed into carriers, carriers of uh, developmental communication messages in the, the masses at grassroots uh, level. And uh, media personnel, voluntary association or agencies engaged in the field of of journalism and media are concerned with the activity of development communication or reporting. Yet the cause of you know development reporting has not been served in an ideal manner so far. Uh, so what we do in the university is we send our students. I send my students to the nearby villages and they bring um, uh, facts you know from the nearby villages. They they, they 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 write report and it is published. So of late people are becoming you know conscious of the utility. Uh, and the importance of this particular medium of, of for making people aware of the developments in various fields. So more such efforts are being taken up for promoting this aspect. You know, so and uh, the community radio stations, of course, are becoming popular among the masses in this connection. But even in this regard, I think um, there's a long way to go in Northeast. Uh, so that is it. And uh, thank you so much for uh, listening to me. And um, that's it. Hi, thank you so much, uh, ma'am, for such a wonderful and a uh, well explained uh, presentation. It was really wonderful hearing you and sharing so experience much. and uh, bringing in the quotes of such senior people is really amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pooja, for your support. Thank you, ma'am. We are lucky to have uh, Dr. Amri Saxena with us. He's a renowned uh, professional in the media industry, and uh, he's an anchor. He's a dean at DME, and uh, he's a journalist. So a lot more I can talk about Amri, sir. Sir, always good to have you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> 
uh, it was indeed a, I mean, a very, very exhaustive and very informative presentation, I would say. And uh, the kind of understanding that uh, Florence tried to give to these young minds about development, because development is one such thing, which is the, I believe, whether we talk about this within the uh, framework of media education or outside the framework of media education, but this is something which is most uh, talked about thing. Uh, now it is. And uh, relating development with communication uh, becomes important because anybody who is studying uh, journalism or mass communication as a subject uh, at whichever level, at the undergraduate level or the master's level, and then practicing uh, the media, uh, whichever platform, uh, irrespective of print, uh, radio, television, and whatever but then development messages are always important and i believe right from the time uh, the, the the modern media is started it all started uh, with uh, the communication of development messages radio as florence was talking about uh, was initially uh, encouraged after the independence not as a media but as an instrument of development so <clears throat> whether we uh, talk, talk about even entertainment, it was good that uh, she was uh, uh, referring to example from the entertainment sector, the films, the popular films. But those films are again taking forward the messages of development communication. So development communication, I believe, is the most vital area in communication and media studies. And the role of media has very clearly been spelled out uh, as uh, Florence was talking about development support communication. So media's role is uh, very well defined, is very categorically interpreted. And uh, that is how uh, anybody who is joining uh, media as a profession must understand as to what all can be done uh, with the help of uh, media messages uh, to take the uh, development uh, forward and it applies for all countries developed countries or developing countries but obviously a country like uh, india which is a developing countries where a lot more is to be done so these things have to be have to be clarified to the young people so that when they are practicing media so they keep uh, all these factors in mind. And uh, as uh, Florence also talked about the participatory part of development, which is again very, very important because no development is possible uh, without the participation of the beneficiaries, the, the citizens, the common people. Obviously, it's the prime responsibility of the government to make the policies, regard policies, to implement those policies, funding those policies, programs, uh, welfare schemes, etc. But ultimately, Ultimately, it's for the people. So people should also be participatory. People should also understand uh, the importance of development. They should also have an appreciation for the development programs and policies which are being brought uh, for them. And here again, the communicators and the media professionals, they have a very important role to play. So I thank you, Florence, for bringing all such knowledge in this uh, session. Yeah, over thank to you. you sir. Thank you, sir. It Thank was a pleasure. So much, uh, very well said. You have summed it up uh, uh, like very, very professionally, I would say. Talking about radio as an instrument for development is like something that would not come to the young minds. So at the same time, when we are talking about the history and uh, uh, various sections of media, we are coming up with new trends in advertising tomorrow by Dr. Tanu Dang. She's an, an assistant professor, Department of Journalism and Mass Comm at Khwaja Mohiddin Chishti Language University in Lucknow. And she'll be available tomorrow, 11.30. So stay tuned for this session. And uh, about today's session, I have no words. Just would like to say thank you so much, uh, Dr. Florence Handrick. And thank you, Amri, sir. Thank you guys for watching us. And I'm sure you'll be enjoying uh, this series and we'll be coming and meeting you tomorrow at 3.30. Till then, take care. Goodbye.